you know, these fundamental aspects of a, 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 of a market-friendly strong state uh, with uh, with a will to change and a will to transform, but also a collective responsibility. Well, this began when we were poor. And one of our most important messages when we are responding to the international interest which comes from everywhere from China to developing countries in Africa, what did you do? One of our most important messages is to say, we started distribution, we started legal, uh, uh, establishing legal formal rights, and we started building strong trade unions and strong employers' organizations while we were poor in absolute terms and in relative terms to all the European countries. So it's not that we first we got rich and then we started to distribute all the money we had. We actually got rich through this sort of collective effort. Now, that's not about taxation, uh, so international taxation, but it's I I important to uh, you know to mention this in this context that that we actually have something to to, to teach. Uh, of course, we should all be careful because all Nordics and the Norwegians are worse are particularly good at you know, telling people that you should just do like us and everything will be fine. That's, of course, in many instances not true. But in some cases, there may be a point uh, to share. And when people ask, we will at least uh, answer. It's also interesting that uh, we just have an OECD uh, report on, on na national, on classic taxation, which where Norway came out with the lowest income tax of all the Nordic countries. Uh, but we have quite a lot of money from income taxation. How does that work? Well, it's because basically everybody pays tax. Because we've sort of we've been able to fill most of the holes. Not all. We're still looking for the people who are evading taxes, uh, you know, from uh, legally or illegally. But so uh, such a large percentage of our workforce uh, 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 pays tax that we don't have need to have such a high taxation on everyone. So the tax base is very, very broad that people actually pay. It helps bring money into the government, but it also uh, helps uh, e e equal distribution and, and to contribute to uh, you know, low wage differences. And that means, again, that a lot of people can continue to buy and continue to act uh, financially because uh, when you have uh, very broad, big differences, you have poor, uh, poor people who have nothing to spend and rich people who have too much to spend so they don't spend and put it in the bank or in sort of suspect financial uh, services. So, you know, equality is good for so many things. And, uh, and in addition, you have non-economic non, uh, you know, non benefits, so low, low crime rate and so on as well. So, so the Nordic model is relevant also in this, in this context. Um, it's also very interesting uh, what was said by Benedict that attack is actually close to achieve its goal. I mean, I think I tell you, will still be around. You know, there's uh, still some time before uh, everything is uh, is done. But it, it's 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 really fascinating that uh, you know you, you you used to sort of try to destroy IMF meetings. Now IMF is discussing your program and actually trying to you know to identify ways of actually introducing uh, um, actually introducing international taxation. The EU Commission, as we heard. Uh, Norway's uh, and, and 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 why is that? You know why the, why has that come so high on the agenda? I think there is, uh, as Kis said it very well, uh, when the financial institutions and the banks uh, created or or were were allowed to and chose to uh, go down the path that led to the financial crisis, that was a bank and financial services crisis, not the real economy crisis, but it started to hit the real economy. And when it started to hit the real economy, the states had to do something, and the states basically saved at least those parts of the banking sector uh, that was uh, possible to save and worthwhile saving. Um, and now there is a sense that there is payback time. You know, it's their turn now to contribute because the, 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 the heavy lifting that the states did, European, but more importantly the US, uh, with the very new president at the time, Obama, chose to do, uh, you know, was extremely, it was necessary, but extremely expensive uh, and has a lot of costs in, uh, in the traditional state spending. And then, uh, you know, the financial services have to understand that there's payback time. At least more people think like that than only months and years ago. That's interesting uh, and positive. But why does people want transact uh, financial uh, tax or, or, or whether currency or uh, stock exchange uh, taxation. Um, there are different reasons, and we should be clear on the different reasons. Some initiatives are taken to prevent certain types of action which we don't like. 
simply that there's certain types of trading which we rather see not happening and will make it too costly so that it's, it doesn't happen. You know, another type with motive would be uh, to increase the efficiency of the taxation system, to fill the holes in the system. Uh, and yet another motive is to create increased stability in the financial markets. And a fourth reason uh, would be to finance common goods, uh, meaning climate or development, or, or, or as also has been said, uh, to compensate for the loss of uh, state income that has come from the saving of, of the banks. And I think that now that you know, the, the climate has changed from weather to how, because I think that's the, the fact now that it's not longer whether it should happen, it's how. We have to be clear, and, and the discussion that you should have as, as, uh, as activists and experts on this is, you know, what kind of tax, at what level, for what purpose? That's also the reason for my answer to the question on do we follow the EU? Yes, maybe, but we'd like to see what they come up with before we associate with it. So we very much like the fact that it's being discussed, and it may perfectly well be that the outcome is that we will be you know, with those taking the lead, but I'm not ready to promise that because I want these answers answered uh, before we can go there. Existing policy in Norway is that we have actually already decided to have uh, uh, taxation on international uh, currency transactions, uh, with the only little caveat that we need a lot of other countries to do it as well. Um, so, um, but this is actually a, a campaign following up on a campaign that has been uh, um, run by several interested organizations, including the European Party, uh, the, uh, the European uh, Socialist Party that he and I both belong to, that to have governments and parliaments adopt the policy of saying, yes, a formal decision, yes, we will do it when a significant number of others have done, because well, then you create sort of a critical mass, and suddenly one day you have a number of, of countries ready to act um, swiftly uh, in, that, in that regard. Um, thank you again to Eki for mentioning the work on illicit flows and tax payments. It's interesting that you know you have the, you have strange alliances. We've had lot, a lot of focus on the fact that this, this country, as the Norwegians will know, that uh, often Boston uh, recently discovered that we like Obama better than Bush. I think uh, everybody else uh, all that we realized, uh, um, but but we sort of found that. George W. Bush was almost in favor of tax havens because it sort of it helped curb uh, strong government until terrorism came or, uh, as an international theme. And then the, uh, the, the Republican administration and the Bush actually started to work with us and others on tax haven policies, not for our purposes, but still with the same goal to regulate tax havens because they understood that some of the illicit money flows actually goes into rather murky business, including uh, terrorist uh, activities. So, you know, sometimes you find these strange partnerships uh, out there, but there's been a strong and consistent work um, on this. We are also engaged in the uh, UN high-level group on climate change finance, uh, the Prime Minister Senavi of Ethiopia and Prime Minister Stoltenberg working closely together. We have a close partnership with France, also France as the chair of G20, and there is a conference today in Nice, right, uh, on, uh, uh, on these issues. Um, with France, and there is a report by the, again, interesting partners, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, who we also have supported on, uh, on some of these uh, issues. And in preparation for that, we organized a dialogue conference in Paris with French, uh, German, and several NGO experts, and my colleague Ingrid Visco took part there. Um, so, to conclude, and I know I'm now overstepping my time limit, uh, just to say, really important issue. It is no coincidence that you are now meeting with a foreign minister and deputy foreign minister on this team because not many years ago this was a topic that would be most, you know, the concern of finance ministries uh, because the international financial architecture was seen, you know, yes, political but basically a technical issue. It is much, much more now on the international foreign policy agenda and the relationship between economy, foreign policy, and security issues is now significantly higher than you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. Uh, so foreign ministers and foreign ministries are spending far more time thinking about these issues because they have, have intrinsically political consequences about our collective ability to continue uh, financing the states we want, our collective ability to be good donors in international 
development, our ability to deal with the climate issue, and also our ability to avoid the negative political consequences that tends to come when you have prolonged periods of uh, recession and, uh, and unemployment and uh, welfare cuts. And you know, Europe has seen this before in the 1930s. That was not a nice uh, experience, to put it carefully. Uh, today, the difference, the, the crisis from 2008 and the 2011 crisis <coughs> is probably deeper in a technical sense than the crisis of the 30s. The difference is that we have much stronger international institutions that we can use if we want to use them. IMF, uh, World Bank, World Trade Organization, European Union, uh, and so on. We have much more sort of a network of institutions that can be filled with content. So the demand today must be, be used institutionally in time and work uh, progressive forces together in government, out of government, to promote this uh, agenda and together we will succeed. Thank you for your attention.